My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Coming to you from the inaugural CNBC CEO Council in Santa Barbara, California. Welcome to Kramerica. I'm doing my friends. I'm just trying to make you a little money. My job, not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. Call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. We all want our stocks to be immune to the day-to-day gyrations of the market or the slow drip of news about the economy. But they can't be. They're as hostage to events as anything else. They go up and down, often for reasons that have nothing to do with their actual business. Because in the short run, there's only a gossamer-thin connection between stock values and the enterprises they represent. So what do you do when the vicissitudes of the market get your portfolio? For example, on a day like today, this one, terrible. Dow lost 231 points. S&P plunged 1.12%. NASDAQ plummeted 1.26%. A truly hideous day that was very reminiscent, frankly, of the 2011 sell-off where the market fell 19% because of, you guess it, a debt ceiling fight. Well, you can sell over and go to glorious cash, enticing out the Fed's giving you something real good, like 5% paper, and the market's starting to sense real trouble from a default. You can give up on stock picking and park everything in an index fund like so many experts tell you you should do. Or you can say, you know what? I'm going to put some money in an index fund, keep some in cash, earning a good rate, and then go find the stock of a company that makes something essential with tremendous staying power and management that knows how to deliver for both the consumer and the shareholder. In other words, you can own the stock of Apple. No Apple stock, not Apple itself, mind you, but its stock is not immunized against the debt ceiling debacle. If there's no deal, if our government ends up paying people in script, that's going to hurt every stock, including that of Apple, as people might need to sell all stocks to have some money to pay for essentials that would have been paid by Social Security or Medicare. If some analyst finds out that one of their component makers isn't firing on all cylinders, your stock will get hit. If interest rates spike, Wall Street will attach less value to Apple's future growth. That's just how the analyst models work. If the Fed tightens again in June, the stock might go down simply because it makes up 7% of the S&P 500, and the S&P is going to get slammed. It's the way it is. But if you look at Apple that way, I think you're doing it all backwards. What if you view each of these exogenous events, each pullback, as something different? How about as a buying opportunity? Bear with me. I know for a lot of companies that won't necessarily work. It's risky to bet on economically sensitive stocks when the Fed tightens. For example, you can't view every pullback as a buying opportunity when you're dealing with boom and bust business. But compared to something like a John Deere or Boeing, Apple's much more in control of its own destiny. And not just because it's got a great bounty, which makes it highly resistant to any debt ceiling related gyrations. Well, that certainly doesn't hurt. Apple's in control of its own destiny because it's the best at what it does. Just try taking an iPhone from someone. Good luck. There are so many dazzling new digital products out there, and Apple can give you them. The most obvious story in the world. Yet it so often seems lost on people. Apple likes to surprise us, as Eddie Q, the head of their services division, told me today here. But maybe what you want from your favorite company is what you want from, say, your favorite sports team. You want it to win a lot more games than it loses and ideally pick up some championships. In Apple's case, that's what CEO Tim Cook and his team, including Eddie Q on the services side, are trying to create. Emphasis on create. Apple takes something you didn't even know you needed and turns it into something that's indispensable. They've done this so many times because they're focused on the long haul and the customer, not on trying to move the needle for the next quarter. It's how you get Apple TV Plus, where they have an incredible sense of what you're going to want. Same goes for Buy Now, Pay Later, or the next watch iteration, or MLS. Yep, Major League Soccer. I want you to listen right now to what Q told me earlier today. I think it starts with saying no to a million things. We say no to almost everything, uh, to say yes to a few things. And hopefully those few things that you try to say yes to are... They, they have two things in common. Number one, they're things that we're good at, or we think we can be very good at. And number two, the things that we think consumers are going to value deeply and, and, and care about. And so when we look at things, that's, that's how we approach the problem and say, okay, 
we're going to do something really great. But it starts by saying no, because when you get as large as we are, uh, it, it's easy to think you can do anything or everything. Um, and it's just not true. If you want to, I don't know how to do a lot of great things. It's hard to do one great thing. And so we've been very, I think, very good about deciding. So when we're going to go into sports, um, we didn't want to just put our toe in the water. We didn't want to put one game on. or We, we wanted to do something that, you know, I used to, I'll use the Gretzky quote, even though it's, we, we did soccer. It's like we, we wanted to go where the puck was going, not where the puck was. That's what he does. He skates to where the puck was going, not to where the, the puck is. And, and that's the same thing we wanted to do with sports. And so we looked at it. I'm a sports fan. We just, you can see that by what, I, just my, what I've said. I wanted to create something that if you're an MLS fan, you're going to love. And if you're not an MLS fan, the first time you see it, you're going to be like, wow, this is, this is really good. And, and that's what we've seen. I'm like, goosebumps for the guy. <laughs> I mean, is that good? I, I, look, I've had the privilege of watching Apple create not a few additional pennies per share. But something's really cool. Something that goes from non-existent to necessarily just, just pure necessity overnight. And that's how you get Apple's incredible levels of customer loyalty. It's why all my talks with Tim Cook and his brilliant CFO, Luca Maestri, start not with the quarterly numbers, but with customer satisfaction percentage, which are near 100%. That's what makes this company so extraordinary. No one else does it. No one. I mean, no one. Most companies don't even keep track of customer satisfaction. I think they're afraid to. For many companies, it's seen as meaningless and expensive, that kind of customer satisfaction. And in the short term, maybe it is meaningless, because in the short term, Apple stock is hostage to all the same things that plague the rest of the market. But long term, look, ideally, Apple wants everyone in the world as a customer. And I think only two things really impede their growth, cell towers and infrastructure. There are roughly 2.5 billion people in the world right now who haven't been woken up by Siri like I was at 245. Stop it, Siri. 2.45 a.m. this morning. Or they haven't been to an Apple store. They haven't watched Ted Lasso. I don't know. Well, well, no. They'll ultimately adopt what the developed world adopts. So it's really not that hard, people. It's why I always dismiss these downgrades to Apple based on seeming slowdowns in component orders. I mean, come on. That makes about as much sense to decide not to buy a Tesla because there are too many Teslas. Ultimately, when I listen to Eddie Q, as I did today, I'm reminded that the lifetime value of an Apple customer is worth more than any stream of revenue from any other consumer product company in the world. And that's for one simple reason. The customer's always right. If you make things with the customer in mind, not the cost, not the earnings per share, not the gross margins, if you say no to most ideas because they simply aren't good enough, then you can create something that might withstand the debt ceiling debacle or the rate hikes or the, or the bank failures. Sure, you care about this stuff when the stock's going down and this increasingly ugly market, that's it's going to happen. But that's precisely when you should see it because you know that Apple's going to win for you. They're going to win far more often than they lose. A real good team that's not just in the playoffs every year, but they're in the finals. Here's the bottom line. No stock can escape the daily gyrations of the market. But when you've got a great company that knows how to give its customers exactly what they want and what they need, even if they didn't know it existed, well, that's a stock you can buy in a market-wide weakness. At times like this, you want to circle the wagons around great businesses that have seized control of their own destiny. And nobody does that better than Apple and the fabulous people who run it. Let's take calls. Let's go to Keith in Wisconsin. Keith! Hey, a big phosphoro booyah for you, Jim. Well, holy cow, we served it last night. What's going on, my friend? <laughs> I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm a club member, and I'd like you, your opinion yes. on this change in my portfolio. I'm uh, due to balance sheet and streaming and, and government issues. I'm thinking of, of getting out of the mouse house and buying more cat. Uh, I wish we didn't have to do an either or there. I think Disney at 89 is going to, we're going to look back. I don't know how soon we're going to look back, but I think we look back and say, I can't believe I got it then. I can't believe I got it at 89. How'd that happen? How did I get so lucky? Cat, maybe not. And I like both of them very, very much. Hey, why don't we go to Tony in California? Tony! Mr. Kramer, Mr. Kramer, hey, thank you again for all your energy and guidance. I've been a uh, I try to bring it Libre for about three years now, and it's doubled mm -hmm. since May. Do, should I keep on holding or 
Did I ring the register? Well, you can schnitz a little. You can schnitz a little, but I was an original investor in this one. I can't own stocks now. I original investor in Mercado Libre. I met these people who run it, and it was like, blow away. And they're only better now. Uh, let's go to Kenneth in Texas. Kenneth. Hey, Jim. You're one of my greatest stock market heroes. I love your show. Then I'm doing okay. What's happening? Hey, I wonder what you think of Ford and the, the future earnings, and is the dividend safe? I think that they're going to have $6 billion in cash flow. The street thinks it's going to be $2.7 billion. I think the street is wrong. I am banking with Jim Farrell, the CEO. He said he's going to do the quarter last time he did the quarter. It's a big position for the trust, and I only wish that I owned more. All right, listen to me. When I listen to Eddie Q, as I did today, I'm reminded that the lifetime value of an Apple customer is worth more than any stream of revenue from any other consumer product company, maybe ever. It's just part of why Apple is the stock to buy in the market-wide weakness that I am predicting while this dead ceiling wrangle goes on. From FinTech to cybersecurity, we got a big show out here at the CNBC Summit in Santa Barbara. On Man Money Tonight, we're always looking for a way to capitalize on the rise of sustainability initiatives across the globe. And after recent acquisition, Carrier is set up to do just that. I'm digging into the story, getting the latest from the CEO. Then I've called in, you've called in, we're all asking about what is the deal with the SoFi, two years after its SPAC debut. So I'm going straight to the source to get the answers to the questions that you keep asking me. And Palo Alto reported after the bell. Don't miss my post earnings exclusive with the company's top brass. So stay with Kramer from beautiful Santa Barbara, California. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.